Today on Q and J, I'm all about the bass. About the bass. No treble. Q and J. Hey everyone, welcome to another Q and J. I'm very sorry, it's been a little while. It's been about a month, I think, since the last Q and J. Uh, the reason being, well, there were a few reasons. Um, the first Friday was just, you know, I did a bunch of Dark Eldar reviews. Uh, the following week, my laptop got shattered and I did a Codex review. And then the following week, I was busy. So as I promised in my painting uh, video. You want to see my laptop? This is what happens when Rubik goes through your laptop. So as you can see, uh, I don't know if you can pick this up really well. Yeah. Not a really amazing laptop anymore, but it's okay. I was finally able to connect it. The problem was I couldn't connect it to a monitor. I had to find my monitor, and then I couldn't connect it, and eventually I was, I was successful. So all is good now, no complaints. It's now a desktop, because with this amazing screen. I wonder if there's a way to turn off the screen. Not whatever. It's all good. So, as you can see, it's pretty silly. But uh, let's get back to the Q&Js, as I mentioned. So q and J's back. I'm sorry. It's not a dead series. People are wondering. And every week, the problem is it was just at the very end of the week, and that's usually when I was trying to catch up on some work. I've been busy the last couple weeks with stuff. Um, if you really want to know what's going on with my life as well, check out my painting vlogs. I usually just talk about what's going on and stuff. But uh, yeah. And my Orktober painting challenge, I've been trying to paint a thousand points of orcs. It looks like I'll probably finish roughly in the 900s somewhere. I painted a lot more boys than I expected to. In the end, I painted 51 boys. Boys just by themselves. Um, majority, about, uh, two-thirds Shooter, one-third Slugga. So that alone is like 325 points right there. And then, uh, nine knobs, squad of grots, um, and excess cans. So it's gonna be good. You know, I got a lot of painting done. It's been a really good adventure, and I'll be announcing my next painting challenge in probably a few days. I've decided on what I'm gonna do. Uh, yeah. So I've decided. As I said, it's, it's, it's gonna be cool. And for those War Machine Hordes players, I'm sorry it isn't War Machine Hordes, but I'm going to be doing that in December, for sure. So, let's get back to the Q&Js. Now, some of the Qs may be a little out of date, so I'm going to try to J them, but, because uh, they were about a month ago, you know, so it's, uh, it's okay. So, let's start off. Thomas, J.S. Jang Scar. Let me just make sure that these are sorted correctly. Because, yeah, they're not. See, I gotta sort them. Because that way, I can answer them all. Well, you know what? I'll answer them all anyway. So, I'll make sure that they're sorted. That way I can actually go through them all and make sure that they're ordered, you know. So, Thomas J.S. Sankar. He has J in his last name. I like that. J.S. Sankar says, First... You are first. Thank you very much for your question. East Tower says, hey Jay, I love the content and I commend you on doing what you love for a living. Thank you very much. I love doing what I love doing for a living as well. I'm finally getting back into the hobby and I'm excited to get started. I play Grey Knights back in Demon Hunter days. Oh, that's like third edition. And Well, I guess anything before fifth, they were called Demon Hunters. Now I want to field pure Grey Knights. Pure Grey Knights. Okay, so pure Grey Knights, no allies, no Inquisition, no assassins. Um, I have a 10 Terminator Palons, 11 Power Armors, and a Librarian. I want to get about 2,000 points worth of units that I can field to take all opponent casual army. Uh, I play against mostly orcs, space marines, nids, and necrons. Not a lot of flyers, luckily, but you never know. Uh, however, my budget is limited. Where do you think I should focus my efforts in collecting? Um, definitely a, rate, a dread knight. You need a dread knight. I think you just said that. Yeah, I think I also need at least one dread knight, and I would like a dread knight for tank popping, so fire support. Uh, two dread knights. If you have the money for two Dread Knights and Drago. That plus your current list is almost at 2,000 points. Because Dread Knights and Drago, two Dread Knights and Drago will add like 700 points to your, to your list. So 
Yeah, two Dread Knights and Drago alone will add a lot of, of power to your list. Those three guys are insanely scary. Um, I've been testing Drago's limits lately in my Warp series face-off, and he is hilarious. So that's where I'd first start. Uh, the other thing I would recommend for your power armors is, if you have the money, uh, transport. So either a Razorback or a Rhino to help get you guys where they need to go. Yeah, that's where I first start. And that's not too expensive. That will easily get you to 2,000 points. Um, and then run your Terminators as Paladins, and you'll be happy, happy, happy. You'll be cooking with peanut oil. Happy, happy, happy. Axis, this is Jay. You said that you wanted to get Space Hulk, and that they were all sold out on the pre-order. Mm -hmm. That's true. My friendly local gaming store has a stack of about 90. Where do you people live? Like, where I came from, I think my store had like three. Three or three or four. Yeah. If they still have them, would you like me to pick you up a copy? No, no problem. This was about a month ago. I apologize for not answering your request. Uh, it's okay. I've been painting so insanely, and I think I'm going to keep doing my, my painting challenge for a while. So I think that's going to keep me busy. Space Hulk was really cool, and I, I really like the game. But uh, I'll get, plus I, I feel guilty if you're buying stuff for me. So, it's okay, Axis, but thank you very much for the offer. If you still want to, feel free. Like, I, you know, no pressure not to, but no, no pressure to either. I really appreciate the offer, though. Thank you very much. You know, you people are awesome. Inquisitor Charlie says, Hey, Jay, thanks for answering my questions. No problem, Inquisitor Charlie. I have had trouble dealing with tanks using my Tyranids. The only viable option is to take out them out. Seems to be monster creatures. Walking them is suicide. Deep striking them, a Trigon or Moloch leaves them out in the game for at least a turn. Vulnerable. Yep. Hive guard sound viable, but I'm not convinced. Would you? How would you deal with heavy mechanized lists? Hive guard or zoanthropes. Hive guard are really good for popping armor thirteen. You'll never you know, like land raiders. You just have to glance them to death. But uh, zoanthropes, large quantities of zoanthropes, especially against armies that don't have a lot of psychic denial, you'll do pretty well because zoanthropes have their war plants. It's strength ten, AP one or two, uh, and it's. Um, it's a lance, so it treats all land raiders as 12s. So you'll, the odds are, if you can get that psychic power off, a squad of three will do some significant damage. That being said, they do have a three up in vault, so they do have some survivability, but they will be a target of your opponents. So maybe bring two squads of zoanthropes for some tank popping power. And then the other elite, I would usually fill up with venomthropes because they keep your guys alive. Mm -hmm. Zoanthropes and venomthropes. Inquisitor Charlie! Uh, Benislav says, Hey Jay, on the topic of being an war gamer. Yeah, we talked about being an war gamer about a month ago. I don't have children yet, and that would probably change a lot. But I do run my own small business for that, for what it's worth, in the time sink department. Yeah. I know what you mean. I found that the best way to mix the hobby into adult everyday life is to try and make it a thing that you can do as a family, or whatever your marital status may be, in the so-called quality time department. For example, I sit down once a week, at least with my fiance, and we paint miniatures together. That's awesome. I like your fiance already. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. At first, she was kind of skeptical, but when she saw how much fun it is and how she could express herself think, thinking of new ways to paint orcs, she really got into it. That's true. My wife always wants to paint the horses. But I don't have many horses in my armies, but she, she always wants to paint horses. So eventually when I get the... Um, the gun mage guys on horses for my Sigma army, I promised her she can paint one. I imagine that getting to kids in the hobby wouldn't be very hard either, as long as they're at the right age, and I'm sure it would be a lot better for them than watching TV. Mm hmm. Very good point. Very, very good point, Benislav. I agree. You know what? When I have kids, I'm definitely going to get them into. I'm hoping, if, if, if boys or girls, I'm going to try to get them into, into Warhammer. Because I'm passionate about it, and it's fun, as I said, and it is. I agree, it's better than TV, you know? Nothing against the TV, but I think it'd be fun and interactive, you know? And my wife and I do get to play games together, which is really cool. Uh, she doesn't paint much with me, because I usually paint when she's at work. But, uh, yeah, very, very good point. And thank you very much for your post. Gabe Vapors says, I wholeheartedly agree. Sharing a hobby with another, be they a partner, spouse, significant other, etc., does allow more for more hobby time. I agree. Regarding children, I find that mind 
my love to spend time with me doing whatever it is that I'm doing. So when I'm painting up some orcs, everyone knows, everyone loves painting as orcs. Coincidence? I don't know, I'm painting orcs as well right now. So when I'm painting up my orcs, the kiddos paint their inexpensive models at the same time. Awesome! And they love to roll my dice and move models during a battle. I'd agree. And with my luck, they'd probably be at a better roller than I am. So thank you very much for your post, Game Papers. Uh, Kevin Shelley says, Jay, the objective secured command benefit is not due to the being battleforged, but due to being combined arms detachment. Taking a different kind of detachment with a different command benefit means you don't get objective secured. Correct. You know, so if you take the one from the book, you get objective secured. Otherwise, you get ones, you know. Otherwise. So, cool. Thank you very much for your post, Kevin Shelley. Grr ooh. I like this person's name. I think it's Gregors? It has like a silent Z. Gregors. I'll say Gregors. Hi, Jay. Thanks for commenting my qu for my question about Dread Knight orc conversions. Going back to looted vehicles, as they were named in the old 3rd and 4th edition book codex, we can read a looted vehicle, maybe chosen from the codex of the Yep. Rule book. Ah. Must agree with you, a Dread Knight conversion can be used as a Forge World Orc Mega Dread? Yeah, exactly. New question, where can I find data slates for them? Uh, you can't find a data slate for an Orc Mega Dread. The, um, they're an Imperial Armor, I think, 7? The Imperial Armor books tend to be focused on themes, and one of the Imperial Armor books is solely about... I'm going to look it up while I'm talking to you guys. Um, it is about Orcs, and that's where you can find the majority of the um, of the rules. Unfortunately, you have to purchase the book. It's the one that I'm going to buy. That I, actually, I have the book already because uh, Mr. Cody gave it to me because he's awesome. But uh, let me just see here. If I go to Orcs, pretty much as soon as you type in Orcs and Walkers, Mega Dread. Yeah, it's Imperial Armor 8. Imperial Armor Volume 8 has the rules for the Mega Dread. Unfortunately, there are no data sites for it. But thank you very much for your question, and I hope you appreciate Gregor's Ed. Inquisitor Charlie's back! Nope, that's it. Same comment again. Jim White, time traveling wizard. Sergeant Harker says that. Jim White, time traveling wizard. Time traveling wizards are cool. It's cool power. So, apparently Rubik doesn't like time-traveling wizards. Also, something amusing is that at my local tourney, the same guy won a couple of times using sisters. It's kind of amusing, and he won best painted once. Little fun thing that happened. Um, I also think that if they did bump the 6th head codices to 7th, I wouldn't be horribly upset. I would be annoyed, but I've gotten plenty of use out of my Space Marine Codex, so I've used it, and if the update idea through the digital codex has happened, that would be awesome. Yeah, I agree. That would be cool. Actually, it kind of happened. I think that happened. It was an error, error, error rider for some reason. I, I downloaded the one of the Dark Eldar codices for my Codex review for the digital copies, and at one point it updated it. I know for a fact it, it asked me to update the version, so maybe they fixed it or something. They fixed a problem I was with it. I don't know. But it kind of did. But it's not, a, it's not a free update, obviously, as we were discussing, but it's pretty cool. I agree. You know what? It, it's only been two years, but I've gotten plenty of use out of my codices, and that's the thing. For us, who, who get a lot of games in, it won't matter, but for those people who just got into the hobby, it may be annoying. But I understand both sides. Andrew McCormick says, Hi Jay, two questions and a request. Question one, do you play Apocalypse games and do you enjoy them? No, I don't play them. I've only played one. I did enjoy it though. I played uh, an Apocalypse game about a year and a half ago with Owen and a really cool guy named Tony and his kids from the States. And we played an Apocalypse game. It was kind of fun. Very thematic and everything died. Yeah, I don't promise I don't have any really big models. Um, I really should get some titans of some sort or some knights. A J Knight army would be cool. On a side note, I really want to get the Imperial Knights. I'm thinking, I'm thinking eventually I want to get Imperial Knight army because every time I turn around, and since the last video, I think they put up two more. Forge World puts out an amazing model, right? Like first it was the Lancer who looks awesome, and then the Castigator. Weird name, but good. Good looking model, good gun. He has a bolt cannon, uh, eight shots, twin linked, strength seven, AP three. Um, 
which looked awesome. And then they had the Terran kit, so you can convert your, you can just make your guy look a little cooler if you buy the normal Imperial Knight. And then they put out a Magera, who's like the same size as the original Imperial Knight, but he's cool looking. And then they put out the, uh, what's the other one? Acheron, was really cool, looks Irish, and has like the really cool flamer, the giant, giant, giant flamer, or starting 7 AP3. So I really want them. Eventually, my goal is to have one of each knight and the Imperial Knight, and then just that's my list. That's like 1,500 points, four or five models. That'll be, yeah, I think four models would be, four or five models would be 1,500 points. And that'll be my 1,500 point list or 1,850 list, and I'll bring that and have some fun. Just J Knights. That'll be my J Knight army. Question two. I asked a few weeks ago back in the best units in 40K. So, best monster creature or vehicles? Uh, request, could you do a Corsair army review? I know the codex is old, but you always add something that I haven't thought of. Make my list? Possibly, yes. I'm going to be doing, I got this request recently, and I just haven't had the time to do it. I will be doing a cipher review in the near future as well. I want to do one probably next week. I'll do a cipher review. Yes. And, uh, yeah, obviously, best monstrous creature, uh, Wraith Knight, or Riptide, in my opinion. Wraith Knight or Riptide? Uh, third, or a Dread Knight. Those are my top three. I don't know really how to order them, because it depends on who you're up against. But Wraith Knights are amazing. There's Toughness 8, so they're hard to wound. They can give a 5-up invol, 3-up armor save, and they can just fly around the field, shooting everything with their, like, Strength 10 guns. It's insane, right? Wraith Knight spam is so deadly. Riptides. Also pretty insane. Like they're only toughness six, but they can get feel no pain, a great involve if they supercharge correctly. Uh, they just pass their supercharge roll, and they're really nasty too. Really good shooting, really good support unit. Three of them will destroy anything. Finally, Dread Knights. Dread Knights, amazing too. They're toughness six, but they have a strength like 10 force sword. And he adds a psyker level to your army. And he's nasty as heck as well. So I'd say my top three would be Wraith. I don't know really how to order them. Wraith Knight, Riptide, Dread Knight for monster creatures. Because none of the Tyranids can stack up to any of them. Um, there's no Tyranid that would go against any of them and survive, really. Even the Swarm Lord would have a real tough time against pretty much any of them. Because the Swarm Lord wouldn't get to the Wraith Knight or the Riptide, and then the Dread Knight could just instant kill the Swarm Lord. Stay in cover. They chuck salt in. It dies. Um, same with demons. The demons now are all the toughness five. Maybe the great unclean one. But when he's combined, when he's really good and supercharged, he has great synergy with um, the other one. The Zinch one. Yeah, I'd still say Riptide, Dread Knight, and uh, Wraith Knight. Mm-hmm. And Johnny Torrance says, Jay, do you think the individual army tactical cards are worth it? Yes, I do. If you play a lot of Maelstrom or War Missions, I highly recommend them. Uh, because you're supposed to bring them. You know, I did get Grey Knights and I really regret it. So if you do play Maelstrom or War Missions, yes. If you don't play Maelstrom or War Missions, no. That's pretty much simplistic. But if you do play them frequently, it's good to bring them. Because a deck of cards for your own army is a great asset. You can bring it to your games and it just it helps with the game. I bought the Orc ones and took a look at the Grey Knight ones in the Codex. Looks like you replace fairly easy and common, secure. Yes, they are very similar, as I said. So you can bring them if you want. But I, I just like them, and they added another thing to your list. And they're not too expensive. Usually they're like six bucks, seven bucks. Also, do you make the graphics scoreboard on your battle reports? How do you make the graphics scoreboard? Oh, I simply, um, I should make a tutorial on it, but it's not too hard. I use uh, Photoshop. And with Photoshop, when you create a new composition, you have the choice of what background color would you like. Would you like a specific color? Would you like white? Or would you like invisible, essentially? That's called transparent. And all you do is I created the transparent background, and I saved it as a TIFF. I believe it was, I think it was a TIFF file, T-I-F-F -F file. Could have been a ping. No, it was definitely a PNG file. It was a PNG file, I'm pretty sure. TIFF or PNG? I don't remember which one. Let's see. Um, and then all I did was make the, in Photoshop, I just created rectangles, rectangle, rectangle, square. Two squares, two rectangles, 
and that's it. And then I, I fill in the words um, and the numbers when I'm doing the battle reports themselves. I have a, I can put a title file and just you know put the numbers on each side and the names in the middle. And uh, let's find out what the file is. It's you, yeah. Just takes me a second. Battle reports. It is a TIFF file, TIFF file. So it just creates a, a file with an invisible background, and then I can put that on top of my videos, and it doesn't uh, add anything besides the uh, the rectangles. Gabe Vapors once again it says bonjour Jay, bonjour Gabe Vapors. I'm a pickle. I'm in a pickle, and I hope you can offer some guidance. I apologize if you're still in the pickle, because it's been a while. I'm stuck between three armies. Orcs, Chaos, Marines, and Eldar. All appeal to me in their own way. Problem is GW prices for models versus how much cash I have. If you are concerned about models and cash, I would avoid Orcs. Unfortunately, they are the most expensive out of those... Depends on what your theme is. But the average orc army is the most expensive out of all of those are three, um, because chaos space marines are an elite army, and so they don't have a lot of models. And Eldar, depending, you can run like triple wraith knight. And, yeah. So far, I have a bit, I have a bit together armies, but the cost isn't much lower, and it takes more time to piece everything together. I have a proxy but call me a purist. I just can't stand looking at an Orc Farseer, a Plague Marine, Fire Dragon Squad, or a Shining Spear Orc Micro Squad. Please help. Wow! So I, obviously, my favorite army out of those three, Gabe Vapors, is Orcs. It really is. I love Orcs. They're a fun army. Um, I would honestly ask, how competitive are you playing? The most competitive of those three armies is Eldar. Uh, by far. Eldar is the most competitive army compared to Chaos Space Marines and Orcs. If you want to have a lot of fun, Orcs are the way to go. But if you don't have a lot of money and you want to run an Orc Horde list, Orc Horde lists are extremely expensive because they're like a, it's, the, the amount of points per dollar value is really, really low. Which is great if you're looking at that kind of deal. But you, you know, like Orc Boys, let me see. An Orc Squad is only, like if you're running Slug of Shooter Boys, so it's about 85 points if you want to run around a 10-man boys squad with a knob with a power claw. About 85 points, roughly. I'm just ballparking it. But let's see. So for 85 points, how much does it cost you for that squad in dollar values? With a truck, is $60. So for 10 boys, right? It's only 80 points. I said 85 points, roughly. Uh, so $30. You know, but for thirty dollars you can get an elder army that's a, worth much more points. So if you cost or your limb, you know, it's up to you. My favorite army out of those three, honestly, is orcs, but I'm biased. Eldar are the most competitive, and they're the middle of the stream out of the three armies. Typically, I think Chaos Space Marines would be the cheapest to collect because once again they're the most elite army, and uh, they would just be the cheapest per val per cost value. Um, Eldar most competitive orcs. Are in my opinion, are the most fun. It's just they have the most thematic, you know. They're the least competitive, probably, of those three, depending on what kind of list you want to run. So, I hope that helps with your pickle. Yes. Depends on what your, your criteria are, but if cost is your number one thing, I would probably say Chaos or Eldar, depending on your list. Because the, the Wraith spam lists, I know I'm, I shouldn't promote the Wraith spam lists, but the Wraith spam lists alone aren't actually that expensive to put together for, like, a 1850 points you look at the cost value because each wraith guy is pretty expensive so it, it's actually pretty, you know like I gray knights I put together a 2,000 point gray knight army a couple of years ago for a hundred and fifty bucks because I got them on sale but still it was pretty crazy because they're a super lead army but yes yeah, whichever your criteria I'm not going to say one or the other it, it's up to you but anyone's good and you'll have a great time with any of the armies so yeah D-Lust says, Hey Jay, just wondering how you would deal with Eldar and their speed when playing Grey Knights. I find the jet bikes, warp spiders are pretty good at destroying me from a distance before I can get them into close combat. I was wondering how do you feel about incinerators on interceptors or dread knights? I love incinerators on dread knights. Yes. 100% agree. The problem is with Eldar is you will only get one shot. One time. And that's it. 
Um, one of the ways to deal with Eldar is speed. Now, if you're running up against a list that is pure speed, you're going to have a very tough time, obviously. But the way is you deep strike around the field in a fashion where they don't have a lot of places to go and hide. You know? Because Grey Knights still have an 18-inch potential threat range, and they still have a 24-inch shooting range. So if you cover the field a certain way, like typically the objectives end up being in a game that has a large number of objectives, um, the Eldar player will have, they can't deep strike, so they can't move that far away that they'll be avoidable from everyone. That being said, they'll probably just try to divide and conquer you. It's tough. Uh, incinerators on interceptors or dread knights. I prefer dread knights. If you're going, if you're running with the two standard list, uh, I don't know. Interceptors are good too. They shunt and then they flame. It works, right? Turn one, you shunt and flame. But I don't think they would do that much damage. But yeah, they're not bad. I like I like the shunt flame combination. It can be very deadly, especially if you're against a horde's army or tau, or something. Uh, it's just Eldar jet bikes are very hard to deal with, especially with the turbo boost. It's just nuts. So I hope that helps. Deep striking will help. Uh, the shunt flame will help. Other than that, um, bring long range firepower. You know. And uh, that's it. You might need to lure them. Uh, if you are in a situation where you can ever lure them to a certain area for objectives or purposes, that might help you out. You know, you need, might need to lure them. Either they, especially playing males from war missions, they, you force them to come to you or they might lose or something like that or lose points. Um, it's hard. Grand Knights are very slow. They're very, very slow. So you might need to almost give up close combat and just focus on firing until they're whittled down enough or something, or you need to lure them places because it's almost going to be impossible to catch them in close combat because you can deep strike and then they're going to turbo boost away from you. But as I said, if you deep strike completely around, they might just try to divide and conquer you. It's hard. You may want to bring some just long range firepower, um, auto cannon, venerable dreadnoughts would help because they can just shoot you know, would help. And that way you can take them up from a range. But it's very hard, very slow. It's one of the major downsides of Grey Knights is they are so slow. Uh, and they really don't have anything other than Interceptors or Dread Knights that have access to fast things other than uh, you could bring, you know, a Storm Raven to get your guys to where they need to go quickly. They can assault out of it. And that's another option. If you want to catch them, bring a Storm Raven and turn three, you'll be able to assault them. You know, that's another option. A land raider would help too. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, a land raider would help as well because you can move up six, deploy, sorry, not deploy. Uh, the terminators get out, move up their six, and then they can assault up to twelve. So that's another way of closing the gap. Land raiders. You need assault vehicles essentially. Good question though. Juan Rafael Bascop Morales, awesome name. Hello Jay, thanks for answering my questions. I'm starting a new tower army. I've got a lot of crisis suits, two riptides, 36 warriors. How can I combine this with my Necron army? Any ideas? Necrons, I've got everything. Um, I don't know if you'd want to. If you really want to combine with Necrons, if you want to ally with them, you want to bring some, I, I would definitely recommend an Overlord in a Chariot. Yeah, Overlord in a Chariot. Basically, you want to help fill the gaps. So right now, you're an incredibly large shooty army with very little assault. Um, and if you need to go into assault, the Overlord with a Warsythe in a barge, command barge, is the scariest thing the Necrons have in close combat. By far. Scary, scary, scary stuff. And keeping him back will... Even if you keep him back, it will make your opponent... Especially if it's Mind Shackle Scarabs. Give him Mind Shackle Scarabs. Uh, keeping him back will force your opponent to really think about trying to assault the Tau. Because number one, Overwatch is just crazy with Tau. And second, the Command Barge Overlord is just nasty. He will kill a lot of stuff. Uh, other things... 
long range fire. No, see the thing is, Tau already have the long range firepower, and uh, yeah, they're as I said, you may much want to bring some close combat oriented guys. You know, that might be it because it might fill the gap of the Tau. You have Riptides, which are good in close combat, but I'd recommend just uh, bring close combat oriented army because the Tau, whatever the Tau can, like whatever the um, Necrons can do, Tau can do almost just as well, or if not better, for, for shooting. They have high strength weapons. You don't really need to worry about the glancing in a vehicle to death if you have Tau. They'll probably just pop the vehicles. And yeah, it's a close combat. So bring close combat oriented Necrons, like the uh, the elite guys with the the war scythes, um, a war, a overlord with war scythes, cryptex. Uh, House of Geek says, good afternoon, Jay. Good afternoon. Matt here, again, from Derbyshire, England. First thing, I really enjoy your Q&Js and your Tactical Batrooms. Very important. Thank you very much. I'm glad people are approaching. This week I have a Q&J, but no Tactical Batroom. My question is, what do you use for inspiration when you have a full hobby table? What do you use for inspiration? Um, a lot of the things I, I gain inspiration from are the lore, you know? Uh, pictures in the codices or stories in the codices is where I get a lot of inspiration from. Um, just you know, these epic battles are what I, really got me into 40k, and that's what can keep, that's what one of gives me, things that gives me inspiration. You know, whenever I see pictures, it's like especially in the codex, they're just awesome, cool scenarios usually, uh, or in the lore you hear about this amazing battle, it gives you inspiration for ideas. You know, that's kind of things. Hope that answers your question. Christopher Tucker says, Well, I feel embarrassed. I shouldn't have checked out the info before posting last week. No problem. Instead of Mephiston, I could always put in a normal librarian, or two, because of the sheer amounts of points. Yep, he's pretty expensive. And still have a really amazing squad. So the mor moral of this is if you read the forums, double check with your own rule book. Very good point, Christopher Tucker. Thank you very much for your post. Jay, the Riptide is not heavy support choice. It's an elite slot. All right. It is. Makes no sense. But it is, apparently. The Riptide's elite. So you can't take him instead of suits. How's he not heavy? That makes no sense to me. He should be heavy support. He's a monstrous creature. Very rarely do you see a monstrous creature outside of heavy support. Like Tyranids have, but Tyranids have an elite in every slot. Demons have them in HQs. HQ's a common slot as well, obviously. But, uh, interesting. But thank you very much for your post. Uh, Sebastian... Hello, Strum. And uh, I'll, I'll remember that for future. That just doesn't make any sense to me. I figure it should be a heavy support choice. It's heavy. It's a heavy guy. Mm. Gregors. Gregors S says, Hey, Jay. Great idea to do a review of the supplements that GW releases. Will you also do a campaign supplement like Sanctus Reach? I should. Actually, I did. Didn't I do Sanctus No, I didn't do I did. Um, the other one. I should. I really should. I should just keep doing reviews because they're fun. And people like them. And I get to learn more. Like, that's the great thing about my reviews, is that I learn about the army, you know? I don't play a lot of Dark Eldar, so during the review, I learned a lot about Dark Eldar, um, the new rules. And now if I play against a Dark Eldar player, I'll be able to remember them, and that's good. Mm -hmm. Master Dwaylen says, Hi, Jay. Months ago, you had a series called Painting with Jay Blog. This was a series where you talked about yourself. Oh, yeah, true. Uh, Master Dwellin, so you have probably been enjoying it. I brought back, um, actually I read this comment just before bringing it back, and that's why I intentionally brought back the series for my painting challenge. So I really hope you appreciate it. I'm just going to you basically just asked why I stopped. But I, it's back, and it's now going to be a, a weekly episode, hopefully, and uh, as long as I keep doing my painting challenges, it'll be awesome. Otherwise, I can just maybe take an hour of my week and just paint anyway. So that'd be a good idea. But thank you. I really hope you enjoyed it, Master Dwellin, that I brought back Painting with Jay. It's now at episode 5. Five was posted, I think it was five, was posted yesterday. Today is Friday. Uh, this is probably going to be posted on Saturday, just so you know, because I'm leaving in about 20 minutes after this is being filmed. I'm going to start rendering, but um, I don't know if I have time to edit, uh, so I may not be able to edit until tomorrow, Saturday. But uh, I, let me see, I think we're up to episode five. But uh, essentially, I'm going to go after this and film a... 
dance video with my wife. I'm not dancing. My wife is doing this, this thriller video contest for her work. So apparently they asked her coworker, does anybody know anyone who has access to camera equipment and knows somebody with videos? And having a YouTuber husband, of course, my name got thrown forward and I can't say no. So, thriller! The episode five was just posted. So, and in which we discussed the use of swastikas on tow tanks. It's a really weird discussion. So, yeah, grain of salt. Oop, back to the comments. But thank you very much for your comment, Master Lynn. I'm glad. I'm, I hope you're glad that it's back. Tech to rush. This is for deck rounds, without doubt. Start with the Battle Force plus Command Barge kit, since you get a free HQ. Exactly. You get a free HQ with it. Build Ghost Dark from the BF, and make sure that you don't glue the top gun on the barge, so that you can switch between the Command Barge and the Annihilation Barge. Exactly. Great suggestion, Tech to rush. Great suggestion. And that's a great way to start a Necron army. Necrons are a pretty good army for starting. I find a lot of the battle forces recently have been really good. Mm -hmm. Really good. Uh, the Necron battle force, like a lot of these battle forces they keep coming out with are great starters. Like the ne uh, To me, the Grey Knights one is if you want to start a Grey Knights army, buy it. Just buy it. The starter set. It, the value you get in is amazing. You get a Land Raider, great 7th edition vehicle. Dread Knight, awesome. Uh, you get Terminators, you get a guy. So, squad of, uh, squad of normal guys. No, sorry, you get a squad, a squad of 10 and a squad of 5. So, great choice. Ryan Chippas says, Hey Jay, do you have a thoughts on allying Dark Elder with Necrons? Yes. Uh, Emotech the Stormlord. You take the Stormlord. You're good. You knew what I was going to say. Uh, and make it night fighting for most of the game with Dark Elder attachments so that they get plus one cover saves. Just a thought. You could. And you get the lightning round. I like it. I think it's a good idea. Emotech the Stormlord to me. Once I, once I was reading that Dark Color Codex, I thought Emotech the Stormlord would be hilarious. You get some good rolls. It's always night fighting. Your guys always get dark, you know, pretty sweet. And the lightning round is my favorite. It does, it's not the most... The lightning round, especially if you bring the guy who has the re-roll, one roll per turn thing. That's pretty nice. But uh, the Cryptek. But... Um, I just think it's fun. It's kind of like a, a game show. The lightning round! And then you're just like... Tsh, tsh, tsh. Roll six, roll six, roll six. I love it. It stalls a game, but it's fun. Henry Miles says, Hi Jay, what do you think about GW releasing a schedule for army releases throughout the year so people know when to save up for? I would think that's brilliant. They do that for Privateer Press. Those who don't know, Privateer Press releases all the models. They release pictures of the models for the next four, three to four months. And then they have a release schedule. If you look at Privateer Press's website, they have all the code, all the art model releases up to the end of the year already. You know, and it allows you to save up your money, which is great. GW though, they're not going to do it, and the reason is this: they love this shroud of mystery. They really do, and they seem to be moving. They do move things around frequently. It seems like last minute moving around to happen a lot. Supposedly things get pushed up, things get pushed back. And GW, I don't think they'll ever do it, but that's an awesome idea. But they, as I said, they really like the cloud of mystery, and they also like to move things around so that they can, by not releasing it, they don't have any pressure to do things on certain dates. But that'd be brilliant, because then people would know what to save up. But then the only problem is, though, I don't, I'm don't. i not saying GW is evil by any means, but it may not be the smartest business move to know ahead of time, because then people might not buy stuff on a whim. They'll wait. Jesper Wallen says, Yeah, I agree with you about the Blood Rain Supplement. Blood Rain Supplement would be awesome. Even though that would be almost guaranteed to mess it up to my list. Probably. Have you tried the Maelstrom of War scenarios? I have a couple times. Two times. One for fun, one in a battle report against Skari from Skardcast. In my opinion, it's the best thing that happened in 40k in like forever. I agree. If you have an opponent that wants to play them, they add a stupidly awesome layer to the game because they break your normal strategy you know most armies have a strategy orcs will move up tau will turtle that's why they call tower tools in my opinion tower tools um, they like to tower turtle in a current in a corner you know that's what they do they pick a corner put all their models in it and say come after me especially if the game is like 
Emperor's Will, then you're just dead because they'll, they'll easily get first blood and you'll never get to them. So it forces the armies to be more mobile, to think, and it changes throughout the game because you pick up a card and you go, oh, you know, it, it, it combines, it really does take an essence of like a board game and puts it into a war game. I really like them. And there's cards. Uh, are you using Weird Boys? No. I really should. Now that the Orc Magic has become really good. I really should. I have... Um... <laughs> um... I have... Uh, I do have one. I want to paint him up. But I just have... Uh, he's... Start, I've started to paint him for my painting challenge. I just don't know if he's going to be finished. So he'll be one of the models I try to finish up ASAP. I don't want to put him on the field until he's painted. But I do have a weird boy. And he'd be fun. I like the deep striking rule around the rule. You know, he's not the most competitive, but he's pretty fun. Timothy Studman says, Can you review using dazzling metallic paints on models? You should be able to get these paints at hobby stores such as Hobby Lobby. I'll try my best. Dazzling metallic paints. Dazzling metallics. I'll remember that. And I'll see if I can do a review on that. I'll, I'll do my best and maybe I'll check out Hobby Lobby and see if, um, if I can get some. I'd love to do a review on them. Jim White says, thanks for the compliment. It made my day better. No problem, Jim White. Time traveling wizard. Jay, when you say you don't want to be a Debbie Downer, it makes me curious. Have you ever dated Debbie Downer? No. It would just be too depressing. You know, first date would be like boring and sad. No, too sad. Kevin Jelly says, Jay, for your next Let's Play with Jay, have you thought about doing Blood Bowl? Yes! In fact, I have thought about doing Blood Bowl, and I'm trying to learn the rules right now. I purchased it recently. Uh, after you put this comment, I read it and I thought that'd be a great game. And then it went on sale, I think, at one point. So I bought it. Uh, and I, I bought one of the editions, a Chaos Edition or something like that. And I will. I'm trying to learn the game first, and then I want to do Let's Play with Jays with it. Once again, it's a great, it's a, it's a theme game. You know, it's based on the board game. It'd be fun. But thank you very much for your suggestion, Kevin, Lee, Kevin Shelley. I actually did, after reading this, it just clicked in my head. I'm like, why didn't I do Blood Bowl? Thank you. Mark Bowling says, OMG, drunk video, please be please. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I don't know. I don't drink, so I think like one drink and I'd be like, it'd be a drunk video. We'd see. Like one of these? If this was alcohol? Gone. I have no alcohol. I'm, I you like, I don't have, I, I have no moral objections to drink. I just don't drink. It's just not for me. I'm usually the designated driver. Um, and, uh, yeah. Like, I would probably have the alcohol tolerance of an ant. So, it'd be kind of funny. Orcs is the biggest. I'm from Iceland. Hew, hew, hew. Cool. That means your name might end in son or daughter. Maybe. Just to guess. Iceland's cool. It's a really cool country. Mm hmm. I would love to visit one day. I had friends from Iceland, and they loved it. You know, they showed me, every time they showed me pictures of Iceland, like, it just, most of the time you wouldn't associate the beautiful landscape with the term Iceland. You know, it just doesn't, it's not like, I, when I see, I, when I think of the word Iceland, I think of like a, a, almost like an amusement park that's full of ice. There's ice slides, sn snowball fights, you know. But I like Iceland, it's a beautiful country. Mommy, th mommy thing, twenty-three. Jay, it's nice to see that you have fallen for the Dashant. I love the little dude. He is awesome. So it's been about a month since we got Spock. And for those, oh, in case you guys are wondering, Mandy, uh, I've been keeping this up with my painting vlogs. Mandy got really sick. Uh, she's she's getting better. She's uh, still alive and doing well. But there was a, a time that's actually why I didn't post a Q and J last week. Was uh, we had to take her to the vet again uh, from the previous week. She. She crashed one day, and it was because she had renal failure. But uh, her levels are going down, and uh, she's doing okay. So that's good. She really concerned. And then last Friday, we had to take her to the vet again, and that's actually why I didn't do a Q&J. But uh, back to this. So yeah, Spock. He's awesome. I love him. I adopted a standard long-haired Dachshund, and he has eaten a fair amount of my moss. <laughs> that's the weird thing. Spock, he, he rips up tissue paper. Besides that, he is such a nice little dude. It's really, I, lo I love him. He's a, such a funny little dude. Can you do an Ask Spock? P.S. I agree with the Blood Raven supplement. I agree, it'd be awesome. I think they should do it. I don't, 
The Blood Ravens, to me, if they did it, it would be a very well-selling supplement. It'd be awesome, provided they did it right. I think it'd be great. How do you think it should work? I think that they should be like Grey Knights. Yeah, essentially, a more an elite version of Blood Angels, basically. Kind of saying, yeah, I'd, I'd say a hybrid of Grey Knights. The Grey Knights powers and points cost kind of thing with Blood Angels. They'd be kind of a synergy between them, you know what I mean? Because I, I would picture Blood Ravens to be more expensive but more powerful versions of the of the Blood Angels. That's what I would say. I'd, I'd, I'd really be curious how they do it. I really want to read the Cypher status slate as well. That's what I'm curious about too, the Fallen Dark Angels. Lubar. Hey Jay, I see that you hardly use a Nemesis Dread Knight in your Granite Barracks. I hardly, I don't use them ever. Why is this? I don't know. I have one. Uh, the reason is, okay, first of all, the reason is, um, he was, you know, if the, if the Grey Knight painting challenge was this month, it would have been painted. But it was orcs. Um, I'm not blaming anyone. But uh, he is on my list if I'm thinking he's going to be a tutorial in the warp next month. So that's the case. I should hopefully have him in battle report starting maybe in November. But I agree. He's just a, an awesome model. I just haven't, I really want to paint him right and take it my time with him and get him, you know, really nicely painted. And, uh, yeah, he should be in Battle Reports. He's the best thing in the Codex other than, I'd argue, Drago. Drago's pretty awesome. And I really should have him. No excuses. So, I know. I have a model. I have a lot of Grey Knight models that I should get painted up. Painting challenge. January. But, uh, yeah. Kind regards from Sweden. Thank you. Kind of regards from Canada, Lubar. Emma Mose Perez. Moss? Is Emma Moss Perez or Mose? Good question. Jay, if you had all the money you needed, would you start Blood Angels? And should I make a Furioso Librarian Dread? Yes. And yes. If I had all the money, I would have one of every army. Hands down. I would love to have one every army. Um, so just so you guys know, here's a little secret. Next month... No, I can't announce it yet. Next, it's going to be the next painting challenge. But uh, next month, I am going to have a new studio army. It's not Space Marines. Just as a hint. But they're on my list. Um, but, uh, yes, I would like Blood Angels. I'm really curious as what they're going to do in the next Codex. But Blood Angels are just an awesome theme. Their lore is really cool. Mm -hmm. I actually considered collecting Blood Angels, but when I came to Mini Wargaming, um, I didn't have Dark Angels at the time, but Dave did have Blood Angels. So, the, basically the unwritten rule at Mini Wargaming was we were trying to have as many different armies as possible. So that's why I didn't play Orcs or Tyranids at first when I came to Mini Wargaming was I... Matt already had Necron... Sorry, I uh, Matt already had Tyranids and uh, Dan had Orcs. So... And then, because Dave had Blood Angels, I intentionally did not collect Blood Angels. So, yes. And yes, I think you should. They're awesome. But then again, it might be worth waiting, since Blood Angels are probably just around the corner. You know, I could picture Blood Angels getting a new book, because this month the big theme is Nurgle in um, Fantasy. But uh, the next big thing is probably going to be Blood Angels or Necrons. So we'll see. I'm kind of curious to either. Archon Timitron. By the way, people, uh, Archon Timitron, I've been watching a lot of his videos. If you, um, Archon Timitron left the next comment, but if you want to see some Dark Eldar stuff, you know, it's Dark Eldar and Eldar. But uh, Archon Timitron, check him out. It's a cool YouTube channel. He's just getting off the ground. Um, but uh, his videos, I'm, I'm getting stuff from his videos. It's pretty cool. Cool channel. So if you could check out Archon Timitron. I gotta sneeze. But I'm not going to. That was a cool sound effect. Ooh. So next. Uh, next question. Archon Timitron. As I said. Archon Timitron. Archon Timitron. Pretty sure the 2d6 roll for the strength of the shock attack gun is separate from the scatter roll. That's what I thought. 
You roll it first, and then you roll the scatter regardless. That's what I think so, too. Since then, I've, I've looked at a bunch of things. I think that's how you play it. Scarred cast. Scarry. Another great QJ. Have you considered doing some kill team stuff? I have considered doing some kill team stuff. I might start doing it. Um, I was experimenting with, with combat patrol at one point, but just because I've known um, I know many Wargaming's numbers... Um, the kill team and combat patrol doesn't seem to be as popular as the normal game. So when popular, when when uh, when available, I should do the normal game. You know that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, just yeah, you know because. But kill team is really cool too. And the thing is, the weird thing about kill team is it does. It, it's kind of weird. It's disproportionate to the number of models. You actually spend a lot of time because it almost makes like a war machine version of, of uh, 40k. But yes, I definitely want. Uh, kill team's cool. Combat patrol's cool. Normal game school. I could play all of them. I should just cycle between them and stuff. But uh, or maybe do like one in every five battle reports will be kill team. One in every five will be combat patrol, and the rest will be normal. Something like that. Donus Lil says, "Do you believe that with the way things are going, that fantasy will have the same thing happen where everything is released in a row before any major forty k releases again?" No. I don't, to be honest. Um, the reason being is for GW, um, GW knows 40K is more popular. It really is. So I think maybe a couple of fantasy things are up in the pipe. Obviously the Nurgle thing, but I think they're going to keep going with 40, at least until they're done with the old codices. I don't see them stopping anytime soon. I really don't. Uh, GW knows 40K is their top selling product in most, in most of the world. And they're going to try to keep us happy. I really think so. Uh, Fantasy is going to get some updates too, but I really don't see them stopping. Dan Le Daniel Osudin says, Jay, I wanted to ask you about your opinion on some of the Forge World Imperial Armor Guard units. Firstly, do you think that the Salamander vehicles are a good option to take along with Chimeras and Hellhounds? Yes, they could be. Depends on which vehicle, but yes. Secondly, how would you build an army list based on artillery car carriages and field artillery units? Would you use platoons to shield them from assaults or just run plasma vet multi vets to distract the opponent from the artillery? That's actually what I would do. Um, I would personally give your opponent the choice of if with artillery units, they're really they're vulnerable if you want if your opponent wants to go for them. Uh, rather than blocking them and just showing how powerful they are and making your opponent go, oh, okay, I should, we should go for them, especially if your opponent has a way around it, like deep striking, um, outflanking, fast-moving vehicles, I'd actually just give them the choice, give them the conundrum, as Skycast would say. I'm just going to adjust my camera here. And give melt. I'd say Meltavets. Personally, that's my opinion, because Meltavets is scary. Meltavets are scary, and they will distract your opponent from the artillery. So they it gives your opponent an even scarier target to focus on and your artillery can do its job. That's my opinion, but that's what I would normally do. Also, do you know any good unit combinations from Imperial Armor Book to work with as well at the Guard Ghost? Unfortunately not. Um, I'm not really big on the Imperial Armor Books. I'm learning the Imperial Armor 8 book right now, uh, but it's mostly Orcs that I'm looking at. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not very big with the Imperial Armor stuff yet. I want to learn in the future, because they, once again, they add an awesome layer to the, the game. So, yes. The Lad's Lounge. Pence is many. Penny is one. Ten pence, one penny. So, a more personal question this time. Are you going to have children, Jay? Me? No. My wife? Maybe. <laughs> I had to be a jerk. Also, you can notice, I really hope this isn't bugging, I just realized, I, don't, I apologize that this has been bugging people here, the screen has been flashing probably the whole time, based on the refresh rate and my camera, so I'll stand in front of it like this. Uh, my wife and I do plan on having kids. We do. Uh, not right now, because my wife just got her job and we want, she wants to do her job for a little while and enjoy life outside of school, and eventually we will have kids. That's our goal. Until then, we have a dog, a dog, and a cat, and a pizza place. Too good, you know. Just kidding about the pizza place. It used to be an old TV show. Uh, until then, Rubik, Spock, and Manny will keep me occupied. So one day, kids. Yes, that is my goal. We just had our second one. Congratulations, Lads Lounge. Two months back, a lovely little daughter. Congratulations. Uh, for Just for curiosity, what did you name her? 
for cool names. I won't take your name, I promise. But um, that's very cool. Congratulations. You know, and uh, that's great. I'm, I'm happy to hear that. You know, families are awesome. So I really would like to have kids. And I'd actually like to have a daughter one day myself. I don't care that I'll have to worry about her when she becomes a teenager. You know, I'd like one boy, one girl at least. We're probably going to have two. I can see us having two kids. Based on the time frame. I'm already a little older. So we'll see. Play it by ear. I'm easy going. Um, the comic detachments. Two command benefits. Yeah. Oh, sorry. The next one is about uh, Angel Li Liera. Just talking about the subject of attachments, which since then we've ironed out exactly. Different attachments get different benefits. Objective security is a benefit from the combined arms attachment. Exactly. Yes. Basically, is to summarize the things. Um, if you take a Nemesis Strike Force, for example. You don't get you don't get objective secured. You get the deep striking abilities. If you take the orc one, you get the ability to you know take three HQs and nine troops. But you don't get objective secured. That summarizes it. Yes, I completely agree. Uh, to summarize your point, but yes, this is uh, yes. There's no more. There's no more ambiguity. Yeah, I just we I, that one day I was just maybe on goofballs or something, and I just couldn't enunciate my point. But I completely agree. And Daniel Osudin said the same thing. So exactly. Basically, you choose your detachment. If you want to choose the standard force organization detachment from the rulebook, you get objective secured. If you choose one from a specific codex, you forfeit objective secured for that new... For that new... Uh, for the new benefits. You get a different force organization chart, allowing you to, to you know, take different aspects of your army, and you get a different benefit of taking that. Exactly. Uh, Nurgle's Grin says, Hey Jay, I hear a lot of talk on the net about Grey Knight Terminators are one of the worst of the Terminators. I disagree. If any point, um, I disagree entirely. Uh, Thunderhammer Storm Shields are pretty nasty, given. But Grey Knights, number one, their Terminators are troops. Base. They're the only army that have base troops as Terminators. You know, that is amazing. Because these days, again, with objectives secured, you your Terminators can screw over your opponent's objectives. That's sweet. Now I know people debate about hammers and force weapons versus power, like versus um, power fists. But as I've tested, that the problem is Terminators against Terminators. It's going to be a battle. But you get a lot more attacks, and you get the initiative bonus of the Grey Knight Terminators, and you still get the hammers, which strike at initiative one and will wreck anything. Um, if you're up against a something that's higher than toughness four, a force weapon is stronger, usually, uh, because someone keeps texting me. Oh, cool. Cody Roo just texted me. Um, and yeah, so what was I saying? Yeah. But I don't think they're the worst. I don't, honestly. I think they're still pretty good. You just have to avoid other Terminators. Exactly. As uh, Cornelius Hamilton said, Space Wolves have great Terminies, and any Termi with Thunder Hammer and Storm Shield slaughters Grey Knight Termies and Paladins. Not necessarily. The thing is, what you don't remember with Thunder Hammer Storm Shields is Thunder Hammer Storm Shields actually have no benefit against Grey Knight Terminators. Everyone keeps talking about Thunder Hammer Storm Shields versus Terminators. Uh, Grand Terminators, but they have no benefit because Grand Knight Terminators will not go through their two plus armor save, and a Thunder Hammer is the same strength as a Power Fist, and they go with the same initiative. So there's real no benefit other than they'll survive the the hammer at initiative one. But the key is with Grand Knight Terminators versus normal Terminators is you just got to get your attacks in early at higher initiative, and hopefully they fail some armor saves. You know, you do enough attacks, and hopefully they, they roll a couple ones and die. That's essentially it. But you, if you notice through my battle reports, I have tested this out in depth. They are weak against other Terminators, but they can still win. They're just primarily weak, but they're great against most other things. 
You know, not that many things are armor two these days, so they're still just as strong, and they have force weapons. So I, I argue they're they're pretty good. But uh, yeah, I know I understand the I understand the thing. You know what? I, I understand that. But even these days, store um, they have access to hammerhand, which means a halberd is strength seven, and their swords are strength six. So there's very few things they're not wounding on a two plus that power fists are going to be wounding on a two plus. And they go through a armor two up, a three up. So as long as you're up against something that's a three up, and they have force weapons or against like hive tyrants, for example, um, they'll just instant kill it. Initiative, you know, at a good initiative. So they're not bad. I, I still like them. Um, Lord Ralph says, Jay, I'm an Eldar player, and I recently bought a box of Wraith Blades Guard. And don't know what to build them as or with their weapons. Can you give me some assistance with this and tell me how most effective use of each weapon? Uh, it depends on really what you're running. Are they magnetizable? Yes. Um, yes. Basically, um, it depends on what you're running. If you're running a close combat oriented list, you want to run Wraith Blades because they really match the theme of your list and they move up. Uh, then, uh, if you're going Wraith Guard, essentially you're, you have the choice between the really good good shooting guns or the really good good flamer guns that both have instant death on a six. Um, I personally, if that's the thing, I'd magnetize them. First of all, magnetize them. And it depends on what you're going up against. If you're going up against a horde list, like Tyranids, bring the flamers. They're amazing. Um, if you're going up against Grey Knights, bring the guns. You can outrange them. You can just, at a good range, keep back so they don't assault you, and just annihilate them from a distance. And then Wraith Blades. I only bring Wraith Blades if you're bringing... Wraith Blades work really well if you're bringing a close combat oriented list, or you want to put them in front of a glass hammer list, a glass hammer unit like a Harlequin list. If you want to bring Harlequins, or if you want to bring Banshees, the perfect counter, because to keep them alive, you run Wraith Blades right in front of them. So you have a, a two units moving in synergy at the same speed towards your opponent, and no one will focus on the Banshees when they have Wraith Blades running at them. But Wraith Blades are nasty. All three are really, really strong choices. I hope that answers your question. But yeah, all three. Depends on I'd magnetize them and bring... Um, at least if you want to run Wraith Guard, magnetize them, and whatever your opponent is bringing. In a normal generic list, it's safer to go with their normal guns. But if you know you're running up against things that flamers will really benefit from, bring the flamer option. Because um, they're just nasty. They'll kill, especially if you're up against like Tyranids. Tyranids, oh my goodness. If a monster creature tries to assault them, they each get D3 hits. One roll of six, poof, goes the monster creature. It's really nasty. But uh, just if armies that you're afraid of the assault, like Grey Knights, I'd recommend keeping at a slight distance and just shooting at them. You know, it, uh, well, even the flamers, see, anything's good. It's just, the flamers, you got to, you know, Overwatch is still pretty nasty. So, anything's really good. They're all great options. Wraith, anything Wraith is really good. And that's it. The next one was just to talk about someone, so it was okay. So that's it. So it's been just over an hour. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Q&J. Leave a comment in the comment section down below of anything you want to add. Any more questions you might have. It's been a month, so I'm guessing you might already have some more questions. I'm just glad, as you're saying, PNJ is not dead. It's back. It's going to be back every week. Or at least I'll try to be. Fortunately, life has just gotten in the way a couple weeks in a row. But uh, now that I've got my computer hooked up, because it's an amazing quality, things are good. And this will be rendered, and it'll probably be out tomorrow, Saturday. Uh, probably Saturday night. We'll see. Maybe Saturday morning. We'll, we'll figure out based on my work schedule. But uh, as I said, thank you so much for... Uh, for commenting, all your comments from the previous video. Thank you so much for, for being a part of Q&J and for watching this video. Please leave comments in the comment section down below. More cues to Jay, more comments. Let's build a conversation. And uh, I'll see you again in next week's Q&J. So until next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting.